My name is Lance, and I'm going to show you my process for how I designed the rechargeable rocket launcher, as well as share some of the challenges that I had while making it. When you see something like this, it might be easy to think that this was a fully formed idea that was perfectly planned from start to finish, but that definitely wasn't the case. First, I started with a vision to make a rocket launcher that's compact, ergonomic, automatically pressurized, awesome looking, and powerful. I planned out the shape of the launcher by dry fitting PVC together with the sprinkler valve. Although I can imagine how it looks, I need to physically see and hold it to know how it feels. This was my original idea. At first, I wanted the path of the airflow to go in a straight line, which would be the most efficient way to deliver power to the barrel. However, it wasn't compact or very good looking. This one was next, which was more compact and looks better, but still too long. It was also challenging to figure out where the valve stem would go, since I didn't want to attach it to the pipe itself. That would create a weak point. This is my almost final design. At first, I didn't like it because the stock would be pressurized, which I thought might be dangerous. Most of the weight is also above and behind the handle, so I didn't think it would be very balanced. I wrapped the whole thing in duct tape to hold it together and walked around with it, and was surprised that it actually felt pretty good. I got over my concern about the stock exploding or leaking air, because I figured that once the air compressor was in place, it would stabilize the pressure chamber and the stock. At this point, I realized that good design is sometimes an elegant compromise between conflicting priorities. For example, it was important that the design is compact, but the best way to do this was to curve the pressure chamber. I, I really didn't want this at first because I thought it would be more efficient if the pressure chamber flowed directly into the sprinkler valve, but this was necessary to meet part of my vision. However, this compromise actually turned into a feature. It's a second handle, and it makes it look more awesome. At this point in the process, the design was pretty much figured out, but I still had a lot of challenges. I've soldered maybe twice in my life, and it's always been super sloppy. This time, I was determined to make sure it looked good since I had to photograph it. So I spent a long time soldering and resoldering the connections until it looked like I knew what I was doing. I'm also not so great with choosing colors or painting. To help me visualize what it would look like, I decided to cover my prototype with colored duct tape to get a better sense of how it would look, and I constantly consulted my girlfriend for advice. When it came time to actually paint, I messed up several times. I forgot to mask off the connectors, and later had to clean these off with nail polish remover. Several times, I tried handling it before it was fully dry, which resulted in large patches of paint peeling off, so I ended up repainting each piece two or three times. I had a few other challenges as well. I spent way too long trying to figure out where the battery would go. At one point, I splattered primer all over the wall, and I spilled a huge amount of PVC glue on my cutting mat, which reacted with the glue part and melted it off. In the end, I think it was totally worth going through the process of figuring out the design before actually building it, as well as persisting through all those challenges. This is totally new for me to talk about how a project was developed, so let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.